This is Alan. He died of mysterious circumstances. This is Maria. She died of Hanahaki disease. And this is a menace to my existence. Anyway, Ali. Hello everybody, my name is Brooklyn, otherwise known as the Dramatic Otaku, and welcome to the read and review for Junji Ito's Alley, this being the latest short story collection produced by Viz. Now, um, big spiral-shaped elephant in the room, Uzumaki has come out and is releasing as of me uploading this video. I believe the fourth episode comes out next week with the third episode coming out at the end of this week. Now, yes, I have been watching it. No, I'm not going to review it yet. It will be reviewed within the month, I promise. <laughs> but for now, we're talking about Ali because this is what I had read in September. As I said, this is Viz's most recent release of a Junji Ito story collection. I am still missing Soichi, mainly because I saw this and thought it was Tombs um, and got very, very confused. They're doing a bunch of short story collections with like similar greens at the moment. So when I saw this, I got very confused. I was like, I have this question mark. Um, no, I don't. Ali is its own short story collection. However, I have read quite a few of the stories that have been in this. Either I've read it or I have watched it in <laughs> Junji Ito's Maniac or the Junji Ito collection. Now to start off with, with this is, the short stories in this book. We have Alley, Descent, The Ward, The Inn, Blessing, Smokers Club, Mold, Town with No Roads, or sorry, Town of No Roads, Memory, and Ice Cream Bus. Now, um, a lot of these stories, as I just said, have been either in Junji Ito's Maniac or the Junji Ito collection. And because they have been in either, I have either gone on to also read them online or just didn't really like them in anime form. So I have a pretty good idea of how I'm gonna feel about them actually going in and reading this fucking book. So to start with is the namesake of the book, this being Ali. Story of Ali is a college student boards at a house where the father has gone missing. He moves into a room formerly belonging to the daughter of the house. At night, the college student hears voices from an alley besides the house that's blocked off and topped with barbed wires. He is stopped by a former boarder of the house and tells him that he has seen dead bodies of children in that alley under a hidden plate and their shadows plastered on the wall with the shadows peeling off the wall at night and playing around cursing at Shinobu, the daughter. With this former boarder telling the college student that it'd be easy to see outside in the east window, a window that our protagonist, to his knowledge, doesn't know exists until he looks behind a bookshelf. He finds a rope hanging out of said window and crawls down, seeing everything. And it's not just three bodies this time, it's six. Three children, two teenagers, and one adult man. Our protagonist goes to escape the alley to go and tell the police, but on escape he is nearly stabbed as the daughter flings him back down into the alley, confessing that all of these dead bodies are because of her. First with her trapping the three boys down there, then luring two girls and straight up murdering them in there, and then killing the father as well, who kept trying to cover for his daughter. After confessing all this, she looks down to the protagonist to see that he has passed out in the alley. She jumps in trying to see what's going on and the rope snaps, trapping her and our protagonist in the alley with the sun setting. The final panel showing the shadows beginning to peel from the wall. This is Shinobu. I know very vague um, explanations. I didn't write down all the names of the characters and this is just sort of how I remembered it. Um, I had already read Alley without realizing, I guess. <laughs> 
When I did see this on the shop floor again, I did think I'd already owned the book. Seeing as I have read it before, I have r no real thoughts about the story other than I like Shinobu's realization that she is fucked and how she goes from acting like a cold-hearted killer to the 14 year old girl that she actually is, terrified about the consequences of her actions coming to bite her in the ass. This gets a 5 out of 10 for that story. Next we move on to Descent. We open on a woman trying to... Wonderful! <laughs> she leaves a note that change is coming to their town and her husband, obviously worried, takes her to the hospital. Overnight, her and 199 other members of their town go to a hill and disappear. All except for the wife, who was found stuck in a tree. Immediately, the townspeople try and find the people who went missing, and the husband watches over his wife, who wakes up and starts saying cryptic shit. Uh, one of these cryptic things involves people falling out of the sky. When she does, the said amount of people fall out of the sky, with their faces being twisted in horror. This happens continuously a few times before the townspeople have had enough and try and kill the wife by throwing her out of the hospital building, to which she then ascends into the sky and every other missing member from that original group of people who went missing proceed to fall from the sky. The only person missing from that group being the wife of our protagonist. Personally, with this story, I really like how it makes you think about what could have actually happened to the wife and how she's possibly the most special of the entire group of people. The obvious theory is something otherworldly, using her as a mouthpiece and swapping the rest of the people for her. Personally, I like to think that an entity fell in love with her and returned their town for her, which is super sad for our protagonist, and also for the people of the town because all their loved ones have fucking died. Otherwise, plot-wise, it was okay. I gave it a 6 out of 10. Not the worst, but it wasn't the best. Um, I hadn't read this story before. Speaking of stories that I hadn't heard before, next is The Ward. Our protagonist gets into a car crash and is sent to a local hospital. In her ward is four interesting patients who don't eat and do anything everything together. Everything. In this ward is also the other person in the car crash who, who we will call Karen. That is because she is a fucking cunt. Over the days of protagonist being in the ward, strange things start happening from her face weirdly starting to tingle to hearing these girls giggle about having the same dreams. At the same time, you have Karen complaining, whining, being a bitch that uh, the protagonist caused the car accident, despite the fact that it was very much the Karen who caused the fucking car accident. Um, and when the Karen pisses off protagonist, protagonist requests, requests being put in a different room and so she is, saving her from the same fate as our lovely Karen, who is being absorbed into these four mysterious other girls hive mind murder group thing. <laughs> and since the protagonist witnessed these girls murder their doctor, she must now run for her life to avoid certain doom. Now that may have all sound really convoluted, pretty much they're, this monster of the story is four girls who are a hive mind and are connected by a uh, worms in their mouths that um, for some reason the doctors can't see but the patients can and that tingling on their faces is the hive mind trying to get them and for some fuck off reason because the protagonist moved into a different room she does not get affected but Karen does because she's stuck in the room with the four girls. I don't like knowing what the fuck the monster actually is and I don't mean it in an eerie like Ooh, what is this monster? No, I actually mean like I couldn't comprehend what type of monster this thing was. Is it a fucking body snatcher? A fucked up Hydra? The anti-healthcare monster? What the fuck was it? And what is its limits as a monster? Why is it being in a different room make this monster not have its magical powers? I also 
really hated the Karen character, as I mentioned, because I fucking nicknamed her Karen. She is, as I have put her as, a Karen ass bitch. You caused the fucking car crash. Stop saying, I'm gonna sue you. You caused this car crash. You are a bitch. You ruined my life. I hate her so much, I'm so glad she's dead. Complaining that she'd win the legal battle, my ass. I'm so glad she died. I hated her. Conceptually, the ward is a very good story. I just couldn't wrap my head around what kind of creature the monster was other than a hive mind creature, but really that doesn't tell me anything. This is probably the story that got me the most worked up, so I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 just because it was both annoying and enjoyable. So, 7 out of 10. Next is The Inn. This is another story that I have not read before. Um, the next two stories I just really didn't put effort into reviewing because they are very simple. Um, first of all, you have The Inn. Uh, a father gets obsessed with turning his house into an inn because voices told him to do that and he digs for a hot spring in his house and it ends up just being a portal to hell. So uh, I'm not entirely a huge fan of the inn just because the father getting possessed by an idea thing is executed far better in Uzumaki and this feels like a very similar concept. The father gets possessed by the idea of turning their brand new house into an inn with a hot spring but he has to dig his own hot spring and ends up digging to hell. His wife and child leave him as he it literally drives him crazy. Um, it's okay as a story. I just really couldn't stop drawing similarities to Uzumaki which in essence is the superior story. Um, also mainly because I've been thinking about Uzumaki a lot recently because of the anime coming out. Um, so with my mind being in other places as I read this book, um, as I read this story, I gave this story a 3 out of 10. It just really wasn't interesting to me. Um, and same goes with the next story, Blessing. So I gave this one a 5 out of 10. Essentially a father will not give his daughter's blessing to be married um, to her boyfriend, the love of her life. Um, the boyfriend, who is sick and tired of not getting uh, the father's blessing, breaks up with his girlfriend, um, only for the brother, who would ridicule the boyfriend, to come up to him and go, please continue to try and get uh, my father's blessing. You can do it. I believe in you, even though I keep ridiculing you about it. Um, you can do it. And for 15 years, he fucking tries. Um, and his girlfriend is weirdly the same age the entire time. Turns out, uh, the night that the boyfriend broke up with the girlfriend, she ended it. And, um, her spirit only roamed around when he was trying to get her blessing. When he was trying to get the father's blessing for them to be married. Um, and for the father, who was deeply upset that his daughter died, to keep seeing his daughter keeps this guy coming to get her blessing, his blessing to marry her. It's very repetitive and very annoying. Um, I wasn't a massive fan of this story. I'm not a huge fan of repetitive stories. Um, so I gave this 5 out of 10. It was kind of just the most average story in the entire book. Next is The Smokers Club. To put it lightly, The Smokers Club is, um... A boy gets tobacco from a crematorium uh, that the tobacco apparently grows very fast because of the ashes being spread out of the crematorium and he makes cigarettes out of it and once people smoke these cigarettes um, black smoke comes out of their eyes and mouth as if they were a smokestack. Now I really wish there was more consequences than characters essentially turning into smoke towers. Similar to the inn, I kept pulling sim similarities to Uzumaki due to the similarity in imagery around the smokestacks and because, again, of Uzumaki's recent release. 
Uh, I wasn't a huge fan around the story, mainly because I don't really see the appeal in smoking much, uh, much like our protagonist, and did feel like it was a good representation in the consequences of smoking. Uh, the tobacco coming from the crematorium definitely added a layer of grossness and creepiness that is uniquely Junji Ito, but I didn't feel like I could really get into this story, so again, I gave it a 5 out of 10. It's again, very average. Not a whole lot happens other than the, uh, people who smoke these cigarettes kind of turning into smoke te smoke stacks, but not literally. I would have thought maybe literally, but not literally. The next ones we get into, most of them I have already read, starting with mold. So we're going to see a theme in the next few stories, as I've already perceived this one before. Whether I have read it or watched it, I don't remember. I just know I have seen this story before. And in all basicness, it involves a guy coming back from a business trip to find his house trashed by the weirdo family that he lent it to, only to find their corpses are in the attic and they, that their corpses were overtaken by mold. The same mold overtaking his entire house and overtaking the protagonist. The story is just kind of icky and boring and I don't particularly like the protagonist as generally stories where a family is a bit odd and causes destructions are not stories that I particularly like in the Junji Ito universe and I gave it a 4 out of 10. I really didn't like it. Next is A Town With No Roads. Um, <clears throat> I have already read this story before, I've watched this story before, I am very very well aware of this story. Um, so I'm unfortunately not going to do my due diligence and recap the story um, or tell you the plot because if you have watched the Junji Ito collection then you know how this story takes a really fucking long time to actually get to the town with no roads. This story is honestly in three chunks with the first part being the Aristotle theory and the boy that has fallen in love with our protagonist then being murdered. Then second part is her family getting super fucking nosy. Then in the third part is the actual town with no roads and the aunt being um eccentric. <laughs> I do like how the story is all about the invasion of privacy and how it can drive someone mad or make you feel like others are going mad trying to get into your personal life. I personally am just not a huge fan of the story starting in like what feels like one place and then and then in the end you feel like you've read three different stories. I like the sadness of the first part and really want to punch the girl's family and then feel conflicted for the aunt in the end. This gets a 6 out of 10. I get that was a bit scatterbrained, but that is my fucking way of reviewing shit, apparently. Next. One that I actually haven't read and one that I really, really liked, this being the story Memory. This one was really interesting. A girl who is conventionally attractive has a personal issue with her missing parts of her life from ages 7 to 14 in her own memory. And this is bothering her as the only memory she retained is of an ugly girl staring in a mirror, something that she sees from her own point of view. Terrified, she thinks that this ugly perception is herself and that for seven years this was her and that she can turn back to this, that she can turn back into it and she thinks she can turn back into this at any given point in time. Uh, what doesn't help is that her family has no photos from the time from when she was 7 to 14. All but one. This being of an ugly girl that she'd been seeing in her memory. Going mad by the idea that she could turn into her hide at any moment, she barges into her parents' room, convinced that she is turning into this ugly perception. It's then revealed that this girl that she is seeing is not her, but her deceased twin. That she murdered. The gap in her memory, well, that is her own brain erasing the memories of her twin. Maybe out of guilt, maybe out of anger, the photos were all burned up as to not remind our protagonist and set her off into another murder spree. 
And what did our protagonist take from all this? She was never ugly. How wonderful. I really liked how this story played out, that the protagonist was actually a murderer and that she murdered her sister out of anger and vanity. Obviously, there are hints throughout the story that of our protagonist being scared for completely selfish and vain reasons, but I always kept wondering who this girl in the picture was, that maybe the beauty the girl saw in her mirror was her own perception of herself and that the image was how she really looked, um, or maybe that her parents switched her at birth or sacrificed their birth daughter for a beautiful one. I was genuinely taken by surprise when this ended up being her sister that she murdered her own sister. Like, sinister. Love it. I gave this an 8 out of 10. This was probably my favourite story out of the entire collection. Then, followed by The Ward. Next, if you watched Junji Ito's Maniac, you would be very well aware of this uh, story, as I'm pretty sure this is one of the first one that appears in the... Uh, anime, this being the ice cream bus. I was very well aware of this story because of Junji Ito's Maniac and only because of Junji Ito's Maniac. Um, and seeing as I already watched this in Junji Ito Maniac, I had a pretty clear understanding of what this story was. Now, I honestly did prefer the ver this, this version, the manga version, to the animated maniac because A, there was no gaudy CGI and B, the kid feels like more of a brat. <laughs> the concept, while disturbing as it veers on a sense of cannibalism, I didn't really find it too enjoyable. Um, mainly because the kid was a brat with a father who did definitely care but was kind of also a pushover. Uh, and also, because I knew what was going to happen, this story wasn't hugely interesting, so I gave it a 4 out of 10. And that is Ali, the Viz Story Collection. Now, I sp specifically specify Viz Story Collection because there are other story collections out there that have these stories in different orders. So, um,. Junji Ito Story Collection, Viz Story Collection, pretty much. Uh, as a whole, I gave Ali 7 out of 10 because there are stories that I have read in there that I did like. Um, and again, I really liked um, Memory and The Ward. I thought they were very good stories. Um, would I recommend Ali? I guess. <laughs> um, I kind of get ruined more and more as I collect these because I consume more Junji Ito media than just a manga, so I get spoiled for stories and stuff. Um, but yeah, that is all from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yes, Uzumaki will be coming out this month uh, as a separate video to my weeb wrap-ups and shit. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next week. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. What other horror anthologies should I read as I am getting pretty close to completing my Junji Ito collection? And what horror stories are you reading throughout October? I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.